Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to finish with the sixth part which is the read related data in the section 2 for the Razor pages with entity framework core in ASP.NET core using the Contoso University web app that we have been building over the last five uh, tutorials and the first part of the sixth tutorial and in this section of the tutorial the instructor page we will be creating and that shows the courses and enrollments and um, as per the following slide which I will show in a second um, use of single method is also discussed wherein it can pass in the where condition instead of calling the where method separately and we will call about that we will discuss about the advantages of doing so and explicit loading will be discussed in detail so the instructor's screen will look like this so last name first name hired it office and courses this page reads and displays related data in the following ways the list of instructor displays related data from the office assignment so you'll see that list of data from the office assignment table and the instructor and office assignment if you recall they are in a one to zero or one relationship so eager loading is used for the office assignment entities now eager loading is typically more efficient when the related data needs to be displayed in this case the office assignment for the instructors are displayed so 1 to 0 or 1 means if um, there is no there could be one or no office assignment to an instructor in which case it will not be shown like here in this top row now the courses taught by a selected instructor screen will look like this when an instructor selects an instructor when the user selects an instructor, say Harui, in uh, this, say Harui is the instructor's name, and uh, coming back to this, uh, the related course entities are displayed. So the course number is 1050, title is chemistry, and department is engineering. The instructor and course entities are in many to many relationship. If you recall from the earlier tutorial, so eager loading is used for the course entities and their related department entities in this case separate queries might be more efficient because only courses for the selected instructor are needed so in this example it shows how to use eager loading for navigation properties in entities that are in navigation properties so when the user selects a course by following the select link can we see in the preceding image related data from the enrollments entity will be displayed like this um, in the preceding image student name and grade are displayed for this course and the course and enrollment entities are in one to many relationship now we will create next the view model for the instructor index view now the instructor page shows data from three different tables a view model is created that includes the three entities representing the three tables okay so following my earlier instructions on school view models folder we will create the index data.cs with the code as per the documentation so uh, we we'll go back to the visual studio 2017 and then um, there is a school view models folder so I'll create another class over here so add class and name this instructor index data instructor index data and highlight everything copy of the code from the clipboard which is this now I will scaffold the instructor model following the way we scaffolded the student or the courses you know so we right click on the pages folder and click on add new folder and name this folder instructors Then right click the instructors folder, click on add um, 
then this side new scaffold item go for the default one click on add and click the model class and the drop down list comes up we select the instructor click on this plus icon and change the contours university context to school context and click on enter click on add Now we have got this instructor's um, model on the scaffolded with create, delete, details, edit, and index views. Right. So going back to the slideshow. Now we'll have to run the app and in navigate to the instructor's page. Okay. So control F5 to run. Instructor's navigation is there now. So instructors create new, uh, so last name, first name, hired it, and edit details, delete links. Right. Okay. So now we'll replace the instructor index.cshtml.cs with the code as in the documentation. Okay. So now I have done the necessary replacement of the code in instructors slash index.cshtml.cs. Now this is the part of the code that is highlighted has been included and this is the changed version of on get async method now, as an explanation it goes like this on get async method accepts optional route data for the id of the selected instructor so going back to the code so optional ID as route data for the selected instructor. Now examine the query in the pages instructor. This uh, the page that we have just uh, updated. Now this is instructor dot instructors equal to this this dot include i goes to i dot office assessment dot include i goes to i dot course assignment. So it is like this part. Now the query has two includes this office assignments displayed in the instructor's view and the course assignments which brings in the courses taught. Okay. Now we will update the instructor's index.cshtml with the markup as per the documentation. Okay. So again going back to the Visual Studio and bring the CSHTML file that is the view file for the instructor's page and um, I have copied the code on my clipboard and I will highlight everything and paste the code from my clipboard all right now this page does the following changes what it does that it updates the page directory from add page to add page id colon int question mark okay so if we look into this it is uh, changed to this optional integer parameter the preceding markup makes the following changes as follows updates the page directory from add page to add page like this and within double quote id colon int question mark is a route template. The route template changes the integer query string in the URL to the route data. For example, clicking on the select link for an instructor with the only at page directive produces a URL like this. Whereas when you put um, a directive like this one here, it will uh, create the URL. It, it, it is changing the URL from um, if I put a pen over there, so from this position, 
it will change it to this. So localhost slash port number slash instructor slash two if the ID is two. And page title is in uh, instructors. Right. Now um, it also added a code that dynamically adds class equals success to the tier element of the selected instructor. If you go back to the code, uh, so um, it added a code that dynamically adds class equals success to the TR element. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Selected row equals within double quote success. Okay, this is class. So, for each bar item in model.instructor.instructors, selected row is, uh, you know, it is string variable, it's a uh, Assigned to an empty string. If item dot id equals module dot instructor id, then selected row equals success. So this is a class. It adds a class to the tr element. Okay. So um, at tr class equals at selected row. So, uh, tr class equals here, selected row. So, selected row is added as a class, okay. And it also adds a new hyperlink labeled select. This link sends the selected instructor's ID to the index method and sets a background color. <coughs> Excuse me. So, that is a asp action equals index asp root id equals at item dot id this part selected instructors id to the index methods and sets a background color i'm sorry about that um, this uh, not very clean but anyway it will serve the purpose of explanation and then now i will app run the app and select the instructor page and look at what it will end up with the page displays the location office from the selected um, from the related office assignment entity now if there is no office assignment or the office assignment is null an empty cell is displayed so we'll go back to the code run that control the five Right, so click on instructors like this. So against this last name Abercom, there is no office, but for others like Fakori, Padi Fakori, it is the office assignment is there. So it's ending. And click on the select link. So if we click on the select link, the row style, row style changes. Okay, right, great. The background color changes to uh, light green. All right. So now next is we'll change the update the on get async method. Okay. Um, Again. So we'll get back to the code. Change the update the on get async method on the index dot html dot CS page. So, uh, I will just change this part. Let's write it over from what I have in on my clipboard again. And we have added a public in course ID get set. Um, a new field course ID 
below this instructor ID. All right. And then we'll ex examine the query. Now, this this is the updated query instructors dot instructors equal to await underscore context dot instructors dot include i goes to i dot office assignment dot include i dot i goes to i dot course assignment dot then include this and then then include this dot as not tracking. Now, what is the expansion of this code? This preceding code adds the department entities. Okay, so if you go this one, it adds the department entities. The following code executes when an instructor is selected, id not equals none. The selected instructor is retrieved from the list of instructors in the view module. The view module's course property is loaded with the course entities from that instructor's course assignment navigation property. So if id not equals null, id instructor id equals id dot value. So if id is not null, then instructor if this passed on id to on get async method is not null, then do this. Okay. Now what this code does is, you know, this code executes when an instructor id is selected and the in selected instructor is retrieved from the list of instructors in the view module. The view module's courses property, this courses property is loaded with the course entities from that instructor's course assignment. So this goes like this instructor.courseassignment.select is goes to s.course. Okay. The where method now here, this is the where method. The where method returns a collection. In the this um, where method, only a single instructor entity is returned. Single. Okay. This single method converts the collection into a single instructor entity. The instructor entity provides access to the course assignments property. The course assignments provide access to the related course entities. So. Go to the, we have got this um, EDMX diagram, so instructor, course assignment and course. So this is the relationship it shows. Now the single method here is used on a collection when the collection has only one item. Now the single method throws an exception if the collection is empty or if there is more than one item. The alternative is single or default which returns as default value if the collection is empty. This is single or default in you know, an empty collection results in an exception from trying to find a course property on a null reference. The exception message will be less clearly indicating the cause of the problem. Now the following code, uh, this code, uh, now we can also use single uh, this code, this part. Now this code populates the view model's enrollment property when a course is selected. Okay. Now we we'll, next we'll add uh, some code to the instructors index.cshtml page. So going back to the code here um, below this table I'll add some code so I'll just paste it from the documentation copy and stick it below the table end of the table okay So, um, here, just save it, what 
the explanation of this is Now, this displays a list of students who are enrolled in the selected course. Uh, we will have to test the app. We will just run that. Instructors again click on a select link. Okay, so as soon as I click on the select link on the instructor page, you get the courses taught by the selected instructor, right? And for this. Okay, great. Now, in this section, the app is updated to show the student data for a selected course. So, we will close this application. So, now I will update the query in the on get async method in index.cshtml.cs page again. So, uh, is the code instructor dot instructors so in the original code there is something dot now below uh, this then include i goes to i dot department i'll have some more part which is just hang on a second then include yeah, this part. Now I will have to update accordingly the index.cshtml part also. Uh, so here end of the file I will have to add, add something. On my clipboard, I just paste it over here. Now, this preceding markup, this what this will do. Uh, this is okay. Let me explain it. Um, this markup, the markup that we have put here on this uh, end of the file. It displays a list of students who are enrolled in the selected course. Now, refresh the page will actually, because I have just stopped that vision, I will just run. Anyway, so instructor. Now, select a course to see the list of enrolled students. So, select, say, for example, this one. So, and then select one course, and you get the student enrolled in the selected course, this chemistry with the grades. And if you select this trigonometry, you get only one student with grade B. Great. Now, the single method can pass in the where condition instead of calling the where method separately. Uh, so, if you look into this code here, um, dot single, oh, you could change this where clause to just single. Can change this where clause to without putting the where clause, you can put a single method over there. So, what this method uh, it can 
pass the wear condition instead of calling the wear method separately. Here we are calling the wear method separately, but I could change it so that it could uh, pass in the single method can itself pass in the wear condition. So if you want me to show that, you can just uh, change it over here. I will just comment these two lines out and paste the revised code here. Okay, and also copy it from my keyboard. Highlight this, comment it out, and instead of this calling the where method, it could pass in the single method where the where clause is passed, and then uh, build it into shift B. And it should do the same thing. So uh, I'll have to again rebuild the application, run the application. Instructors and then select and then uh, select this English subject for the student and you get the same result, basically the same result. So this single approach provides no benefits over using where some developers prefer the single approach time or though. So the current code specifies eager loading for enrollments and students. Uh, so here this part dot idol department dot include i goes to i dot course assignment dot then include i goes to i dot course and these four lines of code they specifies eager loading for enrollment and students suppose users really want to see enrollments in a course, then that case an optimization would be only to load the enrollment data if it is requested. In this section, onGet async is updated to use explicit load loading of enrollments and students. So if we just get rid of this part, uh, dot then include dot include so this still has no tracking if I one two three four five five lines if I just comment out and also if I comment out in this part code I course ID not again copy paste we build the application and again run the application. Click on instructors, click on uh, Select a particular student and then this will again do the same thing. Now, this code drops the then include method calls for enrollment and the student data. So, if you look into the code here, this code drops the then include calls for enrollment and student data. So, enroll enrollments and student data, it drops the then include methods. So, and if the course is selected, it highlighted code retrieves the enrollment entities for selected course and the student entities for each enrollment. That is what we have already seen. In the preceding code, we have actually got rid of, we have commented that as no tracking. Now, the, this navigation properties can only be explicitly loaded for tracked entities. Okay. Now, from the user's perspective, the app behaves identically to the previous version. 
So thank that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please put your comments, likes, and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.